Hi, and welcome to today's piece of peace. I come into today with a heavy heart. It's been a rough couple days. But I do want to start our time with um, a mindset of gratitude, even in the toughest of um, circumstances. As I met with the Lord outside today, I could thank Him and have gratitude for the warm sunshine on my skin, for the sound of the breeze through the leaves, gratitude for the quietness on the deck this morning, and gratitude for glasses so I could see what I was reading. For his call for me to pray and revealing his heart to me in light of what was exposed yesterday. For Psalm 91 and Second Chronicles 7.14, look those up. For his redemption, his grace, his mercy, and his forgiveness that he's king above all other kings, that he's Lord above all other lords, that he's the one true Jehovah and the one true God, that he reigns above all things. For being able to pray with my mentor after understanding the difficulty and deep calling that he placed on me to pray for all the people involved. And that he and I meet together and that he speaks to me. This I am most grateful for. I ask him often just to open up my deaf ears to hear and my blind eyes to see and my heart to receive what he has. And I often will just say, please reveal to me if there's something, a sin um, that I'm not aware of that I can confess so that I can receive all that you have for me. He says, be at peace, we one. I'm right here with you. Thank you for praying for those that we spoke of yesterday. We one, I will teach you through my word today. And I dove right in then with our daily bread. It takes us, Our Daily Bread, you can download that app. You can order these books online. This particular one is written by Arthur Jackson, and he titles it His Scars. And it brings us to John 20, 24 through 29, and I'm just going to dive right in. And Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where his nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands, reach your hand, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. And Jesus told them, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Arthur went to write, after my conversion, after my conversation with Grady, it occurred to me his preferred greeting was a fist bump, not a handshake. A handshake would have exposed the scars on his wrist, the result of his attempts to do himself harm. It's not uncommon for us to hide our wounds, external or internal, caused by others or self-inflicted. In the wake of my interaction with Grady, I thought about Jesus, about Jesus' physical scars. 
The wounds caused by nails pounded into his hands and feet and a spear thrust into his side. Rather than hiding his scars, Jesus called attention to them. After Thomas initially doubted that Jesus had risen from the dead, he said to him, Put your finger here and see, see my hands? Reach your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. When Thomas saw those scars for himself and heard Christ's amazing words, he was convicted that he was convinced that it was Jesus. He exclaimed in belief, my Lord and my God. Jesus then pronounced a special blessing for those who haven't seen him or his physical wounds, but still believe in him. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The best news ever is that his scars were for our sins, our sins against others and ourselves. The death of Jesus is for the forgiveness of the sins of all who believe in him and confess with Thomas, my Lord and my God. Arthur's charges to us are, what circumstances led you to believe that Jesus' scars were for you? If you haven't believed in him for the forgiveness of your sins, what keeps you from trusting him today? In his prayer, Father, I believe that Christ's scars were for my sin. I'm grateful. couple hard things for me today in this is that there's a dear person to my heart that has been a part of my life and will forever be in my children who is dying of COVID right now. I am praying for the family and for his peace. And I think what I cling to is that he knows Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and he has exclaimed, my Lord and my God, to Jesus. And that though this wretched virus will take his physical life, (laughs) he will have eternal life in the kingdom of heaven with Jesus and all the saints. And I pray for this family dearly that they find peace and that they keep trusting in our King who knows more and understands more than we ever will. In the same breath, the Lord has called me to pray for some who would never pray for these people. whose sins are so great that many of us would be appalled. He says, my scars are for all your sins, Janelle, not just the ones you feel deemable of forgiveness. All your sins, even the darkest of your sins, my scars will cover. My scars will cover the sins of everyone who, like Thomas, will stop doubting but exclaim, my Lord and my God. There was a lot of news that came out yesterday on some very horrible sins that were exposed and ones that I could barely speak of. But my Lord has asked me to pray for these people's repentance (laughs) and for their redemption. And he says to me, so many will be praying for their deaths because of their sins. But they're my children, my image bearers. Please pray for repentance, a return to me, and my redemption for them. When they themselves see their sins for what that truly is, they will want to end their own lives. I don't want this. Pray, pray, pray. So Lord, we just lift up. We lift up uh, 
this sweet family who is struggling with COVID and I pray for your peace on them. I pray for your mercy on them. I pray for I pray for your gentleness all over them, tenderness on them and for their grief. May they come to you and find your comfort. And I pray for these people involved in what's been exposed. And I pray for repentance. And I pray for your mercy. And I pray for your redemption. Help me to pray where I can barely pray. But I pray you receive glory in all that's happening, God. And that many come to know you without doubt as their Lord and their Savior and their Redeemer. I read in Jesus Calling, Sarah Young's book. She writes from the perspective of God speaking. And he says, Thankfulness opens the door to my presence. Though I am always with you, I have gone to great measure to preserve your freedom of choice. I have placed a door between you and me, and I have empowered you to open or close that door. There are many ways to open it, but a grateful attitude is one of the most effective. Thankfulness is built on a structure of trust, on a substructure of trust. When thankful words stick in your throat, you need to check up on your foundation of trust. When thankfulness flows freely from your heart and lips, let your gratitude draw you closer to me. I want you to learn the art of giving thanks in all circumstances. See how many times you can thank me daily. This will awaken your awareness to a multitude of blessings. It will also cushion the impact of trials when they come against you. Practice my presence by practicing the discipline of thankfulness. May you find God's peace today.